The Neutral Hey everyone, it's Amanda Stevens with The Neutral and I'm here with Miles at Final Round 2019. She finished 13th, which is not bad because there were some killers here. Yeah, absolutely. It was extremely hard at first, but um, I don't know. I came in super, super, um, I felt more prepared and I was just extremely focused this weekend, which is uh, something I've never done at a tournament because usually at tournaments it's like I play and then I socialize and stuff like that. But this weekend I prioritized the game aspect and the tournament aspect more and was doing a lot more uh, practicing like in my room and like going over stuff and just making sure I was warmed up throughout all of my matches. So I think that approach helped a lot uh, in terms of my placement, especially since like I've been, you know, I've been coming to final round since 2016 and never made it out of pools. And then this is the first year that I actually did make it out of pools. And not only did I make it out of pools, I made it all the way to top 16 which is dope. Yeah, from losing in my pools and getting out uh, through losers and just running all the way through to uh, 13th. I was super, super close to top eight. But I think for this being my first major of the new season, I think it's super exciting because now I'm just like, okay, this is the, the first mark of this year. This is my first show out of this year at a major. I had amazing matches on stream. And then just knowing that 13th the 13th place is the first thing that I have gotten out of major like I'm ready because after that like now it's just literally just upwards yeah so there were some major changes made to the to the Tekken World Tour this year you know Evo's actually a world tour stop this year it wasn't previously there's more money in the finals there's more money in it overall there's the dojos now there's the super majors so what with all these positive changes to the tour uh and as someone who you know has been play was playing on the tour last year are you more excited for tekken now oh my gosh i'm so excited so i really like the new changes of the new of the twt uh tour rules i like that they added um they added the um dojo events into the tours because uh as soon as i saw that announced i immediately uh went to my local tos and i was just like listen I know I don't come out to locals so much, <laughs> but I I do I I've been wanting to come out to locals for a while, and I think this is also a great thing for our local scene because there is a lot of uh, strong competitors in Arizona that don't travel as much. You know whether it's you know X Y and Z excuse, uh, not like excuse in a bad way, but like you know yeah, there's things reasons. that come up, yeah. yeah. And um, you know I think because of that the dojos really give that opportunity for those people to really come in and compete for the TWT. So right now I'm my local TO that has been organizing a lot of our, our monthlies and our weeklies and stuff like that, or bi-weeklies, uh, they're in the process of getting that through. So that way we can get that all set, set up. So I was really happy that I was able to work with him and really like uh, hand him all the information. I'm like, here's all the information. This is what you need to do. This is what's gonna. This is how it goes. You got this going. So it makes it keeps. I think that's one thing that's gonna keep me uh, continually growing, but also ready for any challenge, especially with traveling and stuff like that. So I really like that. I'm excited for all the out of the out of uh, country tours and stuff like that, which I'm trying. I really want to get to some of them, especially um, like. Uh, I think it's like the the I think it's like oh it's there's Japan there's two of them in Japan Tokyo and Osaka mm -hmm. and I want to go to those and I also want to go to the South Korea one um, but I also do want to go out into the uh, Europe and play in the Europe scene as well like th this year I've made more of a promise to myself to not only travel a lot in the U S but I really do want to expand my uh, skill and. Mm -hmm my knowledge and all that stuff within the rest of the world and not just keep it within North America. Yeah, so I mean, with, with wanting to travel, there's kind of the, the elephant in the room that you parted ways with UIU, uh, which, I, which I assume, you know, probably puts a bit of a dent in your ability to travel at the current moment. So, you know, 
what are you trying to do to sort of fill in that that gap? Because without a sponsor, I'm assuming it's going to be fairly difficult to make it out to Korea and Japan. Mm -hmm. So obviously I work a day job. I've been very open and very transparent about it on my stream. So I've been uh, working tons of more hours. Uh, streaming more so that way I can uh, help build, you know, obviously revenue off of my stream. But one thing that I have been, uh, I have decided for myself this year is that I really want to seek out sponsorships with other brands and companies because, you know, for the past, you know, since the four years I've been competing, I've been, you know, I've been on teams. I've been on ITS and then I was on UIU. And uh, I think now it's time for me to really uh harness myself as like my brand as my own person and as a brand uh because obviously i've done a lot i've worked really hard to build myself into the persona and the the asset to the fgc that i've you know i've done so far and i think instead of focusing trying to be on a team i really want to focus on uh garnering sponsorships from different brands and companies to that also want to support you know my brand what i do and you know obviously then they get me they get me like get an, i'm the best one they get an e-league champion by the way yeah they get e-league champion you know everyone's favorite uh fgc waifu the twit the twitch uh the big big twitch partner whatever because it's just like i i feel like i offer so much that i want to grow myself and my brand but i also want to work with companies who support me and also companies i believe in because you know i could always get on a team and they have you know uh five different companies sponsoring them but it always it always uh conflicts with yeah well it conflicts with with me and my own you know, core values because um because like i i've always told myself i'll never push something i don't believe in mm -hmm. and i feel like when i get put on a team um with smart that's one of the things i really look at when it comes to teams that have offered me any any sort of signing is i look at who who's sponsoring them you know are these are these brands that i truly like because obviously i have a really large audience and i don't want to make them feel like i'm just shoving things down yeah. their throat because i i i genuinely care about everyone that that supports me so i want to make sure like what i'm what I am pushing is stuff that I actually believe in, which is why, you know, I played with Kwamba sticks for, for a really long time. Still love Kwamba. I still support Kwamba. This, this is a Kwamba stick. I know. And this <laughs> this year I've been I, I I have uh branched out from Kwamba sticks and I've been playing with the Victrix Pro FS and I mean this stick this stick is equally amazing. You know, I I even told the owner, I was like, I really like Kwamba and I never thought I would ever switch to a different stick, but this stick has really got me like i love using this stick so much and i mean i i used it for the tournament and i got 13th place out of it so, so obviously something yeah it's my peripherals are working <laughs> i mean so like so like not 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 for like sellout sunday but because i haven't i haven't used i haven't used the vitrix stick yet so like what about so like it's it's sold it's like its whole premise is like oh it's like the best traveling stick um personally because you know i I know you went to the Victrix uh, event, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that's where you picked this up. What what about this stick makes it different than say like you know a Kwanba drone or something? So what I really like about this stick is that it has multiple different um, multiple different layers to it. Uh, obviously, as you can see here, it has the detachable uh, link shaft cable mm -hmm. uh, link shaft okay. for your jo uh, your joint your your joystick, your ball top, which I really like, ease of traveling. And I, I, you know, that's one thing that I feel has always ruined my sticks is because it's getting mashed around in my bag or whatnot. Um, the buttons and the whole component on the inside of the stick, from what I've been, t from what I've done my research on, this is by far one of the fastest, legally fastest responding sticks out on the market today. Okay. Plus, aesthetically, it's beautiful. We have like the purple and then the LEDs that light up. You can change the LEDs to be um, like a gradient of different rainbow effects or just one solid color or just LEDs that just... Um, react to you pressing buttons it's really really nice i really like this um very like sleek metal mm -hmm. metal body that they have going on it's i i mean it's been really 
easy and simple to t like carry around. I've never had any issues. Plus on the sides, it has like um, these hand. Yeah. Yeah. That's like one of the things I hate about sticks is like when you try to like carry it around, you have to like hold it as a box or like sort of claw it. And the one thing I did notice when I was like looking at your stick is that it has sort of the handle grips. Yeah. So it has these handles on it, which I mean, I have do you feel secure when you're like holding? Oh it? yeah. Like even during my pools, like when I was, wa when I was waiting for my matches, I was holding onto it with the handle and just standing, you know, around and not having to worry about anything. It wasn't a heavy weight in my arm or anything like that. So I, I really like that. Plus one of my favorite things, I mean, I know this is probably selling out like a like a sellout, but I really like the ability to just op pop it open and swap out buttons and whatnot. Not have, to, not have to have a degree in engineering to open your own stick. Yeah, but I mean, that's always been one of the things I really love. That's why one of my favorite sticks is the Quamba Dragon. You open it up, it's good to go. You can just yeah. immediately change what you need and you're, you don't have to worry about any of that. But even when you get this stick stock, it comes with the tool to uh, change out the, the the actual like stick part, which is which right now it has the detachable one, yeah. but it also comes with just one that just sits in there. So you don't always have to have a detachable stick, and it also hold, has an area to hold on yeah, to that yeah. detachable stick. Yeah. So by the way, we are unsponsored. We <laughs> we w she just really likes the stick, and I'm just really interested. Yeah, it's uh, totally unsponsored. I just really I really have enjoyed this stick so much and using it and like i said i mean i never thought i would ever um like another, another stick product. because i i, I love like i said i love kwamba i love their products and i still love them today but the you know as someone who's not sponsored but anymore by kwamba or on a team that's sponsored mm -hmm. by kwamba obviously it's you know i had to take that second to really uh get out of my shell and try new things and uh and, um what's the word Diversify. And, yeah, diversify myself. Diversify myself. Diversify myself with different brands and stuff like that. So that's why when I got this stick, I was just like, oh, I'm ready. Like, it's I'm ready to see how trying something new is gonna work for me. And I mean, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not too upset about that one. Oh, oh, oh there's one more thing I okay. forgot. The, this uh, the cable. Yeah. It's a USB C cable, so you can mm -hmm. actually just unattach it, and then it's a USB C to a uh, regular USB cable. So even if you lose this cable, you can easily just go get a regular USB-C cable that has this USB end on it, mm -hmm. and it works perfectly fine for it. Nice. So you know that was the that's the end of our sellout Sunday segment. Uh, so let's talk some Tekken. So I know from watching your stream and your Twitter and whatnot that you've been uh, really grinding it out in rank play lately, mm -hmm. uh, and you hit was it Tekken God. Tekken God Prime, well, Goddess Prime. Yeah, Tekken Goddess Prime, Tekken Goddess Prime. So what was, so what sort of made you want to make such a much harder push in your ranked play? Um, I was just, I wanted to really get, because at a time there was, I was in a plateau and I wasn't, I, I felt like I wasn't playing in different ways or trying to incorporate different things in my gameplay and that i mean obviously ranked online is never the best thing to ever justify skill from but i think it's a good measure to see what tools you're using work and mm -hmm. what tools aren't and the, i mean there was a good time where i was demoting constantly from like Tekken King and I went all the way down back to like Raijin which I mean everyone's probably like oh, what are those but you know it's it's a good like six rank difference so I was dropping ranks really bad and then um I don't know I just picked it up and then I just really just like pushed myself and I was like okay so this is what I'm doing wrong this is what I need to incorporate let's do that this is what I need to pay attention to with this character that I'm having trouble with these are the things that I can do and I just I really just took the gameplay factor and worked really hard to uh, and to really look at my options towards a lot of characters because I I am a victim of not using practice mode very often but I started to use it very often plus I had a lot of help from uh, from like one of my friends Alex he helped me because he was uh, doing a lot of uh, notes mm -hmm. with uh, his characters and just different characters that he was labbing and then he would send them to me and then we would play and he would just show me stuff like okay especially with the new characters like Negan and Julia and like even Lay and stuff like that he's like okay well this is this on block this is what you this is what you can do this is 
a way to step it. This is a way to around it. These are the frames for the most like annoying moves that this character has. So stuff like that really helped too. And I think it just made me become more serious and more want to push further and i mean i finally did push further and then i got the highest rank so i feel like i just beat the game and <laughs> it was it was you know i it's it doesn't say much because it's just online and there's always going to pe be people that are going to discredit uh mm -hmm. online ranked but i mean to me it, me it meant a lot just because you know i only started playing like four years ago and I never thought I would ever reach the highest ranked with my main character. I always thought it was just like, oh, I'm gonna cap out at like this rank and then yeah. that's that. Like it was never gonna be a growth. So it's nice to see that there's continual growth. Yeah, so, you know, you brought up the DLC characters. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, everybody has different opinions about DLC. You know, some people like the, the DLC characters that have been introduced to the series. You know, Lay's obviously been in the series before. Mm -hmm. You know, then you have people like Porkchop who, who doesn't like non Tekken characters and Tekken games. Uh, how are you feeling about, about, like, Negan and, you know, Geese and Akuma? Um. Yeah. <laughs> Geese is annoying. I don't like Geese, but uh, he's a good character. I think the iterations that they did for like the 2D characters like Akuma and Geese and mm -hmm. stuff like that translated very well. Um, obviously, they're not my characters. I would never play them. It's just m not my not my style and um, I just didn't really care. But playing against them can be a little bit hard. I just don't like Geese, but I respect I respect the fact that there are very, very good Geese players out in the in the scene well akuma akuma is also another one and he's really hard to deal with sometimes but at the same time uh, i think when they when they really did nerf him down a little bit it made him a little bit more um easier to deal with but he i don't i don't find him as much of an issue as like geese or anything like that because geese is just constant 50 50s in your face and akuma is just like Oh, here's a demon flip mix up, but you just sidestep it, and it's like, no, there's no mix up. So it's it's one of those things. But everyone else, all the DLC characters, Negan's looks really really cool. I know Poke Chop, like you said, Poke Chop really doesn't like non tekken characters, but I've I've saw him playing Negan in his. Oh and, man, so does that mean I gotta call him out now? I guess. I mean, he was he's been playing Negan in tournament. And Poke Chop, I'm coming for you. You told me last year that you won't ever play non tekken characters. Well, I'm sorry to write you out, Pokechop. <laughs> but, and yeah, no, so he's been using Negan. A lot of people are really excited with Negan. A lot of people are super excited for Julia and Come how... Well, are you, are you one of, are you, are you ever going to betray, betray your girl? Julia? No. Uh, we're both from Arizona, so, but no, I tried, I tried learning Julia. I just didn't really like her. Um, and I think I think it's just the fact that there's like a set of game uh, play style that I really like with Elisa that mm. works for me and how I like to play. And I think right now, from my first impressions, I wouldn't completely say I don't want to use Julia. I just think right now, with the given time that I had and not really like fully exploring the character and how to use the character, uh, my opinion on her is that she is a really good character, super good. They did her great justice, and I think they made her pretty fair when it comes to like punishment and stuff like that, punishing her and dealing with her. But as far as me playing her, I would need more time because my first impressions weren't that great with using her, but that's also because I don't really know how to use her. <laughs> So that was, that was, I mean, Julia's really, really cool and I'm glad they brought her back and they changed her whole persona into like a, the, the Twitch e-girl. Yeah. So I was like, you went from saving for us to now streaming, okay. Yeah, it's just, you know, one of the things I find interesting uh, specifically with the FGC compared to other esports is, you know, in other esports, if you're a main, like you're someone who just plays a character, a lot of people say that, you know, you're a one trick, you're not very skillful, you know, you just know this one character too well. In the FGC, maining is like kind of the bread and butter. A lot of people only play one character and, you know, it's not as frowned upon. So I've always wondered, like, for people like you who, you know, particularly just main a character, uh, why you don't sort of branch into having more of like, you know, a second and a tertiary character. So, so I do main Elisa. That is my main character. But I do like to use other other female. I only use female characters and and Paul. 
Paul and all the female characters. Oh, wait, no, I also learned Yoshimitsu. So I am expanding myself <laughs> a little bit more, but... Um, so, so we're going to see Yoshimitsu at, like, Combo Breaker or something? Oh, well, you know. Uh, I, might, I might be ready to uh, flash on some people with my Yoshimitsu. But, no, I because, I, like, at, in tournament this weekend, I actually used uh, one of my side characters I felt a little bit more um, confident with. Yeah, and that was uh, Katarina, which is one character I always i had nothing but negative opinions about yeah not a lot of people like her but i think the best thing was that i learned her and then i saw how gross she is so i ended up you know, i ended up learning her really well and she's she's like my sec my second highest ranked character that out of my all of my subs because all of my sub characters are in fujin rank so <laughs> she's like i think she's at like yaksa or something like that so she's pretty high up there i don't know why she's so high up there but i ended up really enjoying playing her but i also use like lily lucky chloe and uh xiao yu it just kind of depends um most of the time i stick with elisa but it depends on my opponent like i think last year in ser i pulled out my lucky chloe against joey fury mm -hmm. because i knew he didn't know how to handle the, he didn't know how to handle the character so i abused that fact against him so so it worked out for me yeah. but um um that's that's kind of what i do with like my side characters is that i stick with elisa but it, unless i am for sure like oh no this isn't gonna work in this this situation then i like go through my characters i'm like okay so this is a, the character this person plays what who's a character i can use that i know i can get around maybe some stuff i'm not too familiar with with this matchup but also abuse you know it sounds so horrible and it's such a scrub and like scrub tactic but it's like what can i abuse with this character that i think they're not going to know how to deal with or like what character do i feel more confident with going against this matchup you know because uh sometimes even though Elisa doesn't have any bad matchups, I think the thing is, is that she has a lot of, um, when I play her, I, for some reason, still have some uh, doubts and insecurities with certain uh, specific matchups with her. Um, and I'm working towards fixing that, so that way I'm confident within all of my matchups with her. But that, you know, like I said, there's always other characters that I feel a bit more confident using against, like, you know, like King or, or against Josie or against, uh, Kazumi or something like that, you know? Yeah. All right. So, you know, we've been at it this for a while. So is there anything you want to say, uh, out into the internet? Anybody you want to shout out? Thank. Oh, yes. I Let me uh, pull up my list. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I definitely want to say thank you to everyone who watches me on Twitch, follows me on Twitter, follows me everywhere. And like, just like, completely wholeheartedly just supports me because it has meant so much to me throughout this entire throughout the past year and coming into this year just uh having that support and it's really helped me grow and be more confident within myself and within my gameplay um really special thanks to my boy alex abev because he has helped me a lot with uh specific matchups um and then obviously my my other my other good boy uh Mason for helping me out too. He he always uh runs sets with me whenever he can. And just the biggest thank you is always just to the supporters because honestly it's it would be so ignorant of me just to sit here and be like, Yeah, I got here all by myself. No. I got here because of everyone else and I keep competing because I know there's a lot of there's a lot of um I have a lot of varied skill people that sit in my community and support me and i really want to do my best and help them feel confident and also learning and competing because i think when they see me it's someone that's a bit relate you know a bit more relatable because i'm just you know yeah i'm just a typical person i'm very i mean typical person <laughs> quote unquote but you know i'm you know i'm like an everyday person so it's just like i really want them to want to also see me and be like oh if she can do it i can do it too and it's like that's that's the ultimate thing is i really just want to help everyone so thank you guys for making that so like so possible for me because like <sighs> i'd probably still be working retail right now i mean i'm still working retail but i'd probably not be doing wanting to pursue what i love to do and i mean 
I just can never say thank you enough. I, I mean, I've already cried on Twitch <laughs> on 2018 when I made my huge speech. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just, I can never say thank you enough to everyone because it, it literally just means so much to me. All right, guys, you know, links to all of her socials and her Twitch will be in the description below. Uh, and remember, until next time, go beyond and plus ultra.